very welcome to um, sort of talk about the service design offerings at NCAD. And we're going to be talking about the courses uh, overview and introduction to the courses. And um, we're going to talk a bit about the context of service design at NCAD, the culture, the content of the courses, and also how to apply as well. Um, context within NCAD is, um, oops, um, so NCAD is a Dublin city centre campus. The, these particular courses are blended. So they're around 25% in person, 75% online, but you will be spending some time on campus in NCAD. So it's in Thomas Street, Dublin city centre, really nice, vibrant, uh, creative campus. Um, Postgraduates are located um, in Grace Gifford House, which is really nice to have all the postgrad community, all the different um, courses together um, in Grace Gifford House. And it, that's on John Street West, just off the main campus. Um, it's a when you're in NCED and you know when you're online, it's a studio based course. So there's a lot of doing, a lot of learning through doing and through action here. We can see um, Hannah uh, starting to create some maps there, post-sitting. And um, we also have a really, really nice canteen. Um, so it's a nice place to be um, and to be part of a community of uh, sort of people who are engaged in lots of different creative dis disciplines across art and design. Um, within the product design department in NCAD, which is where service design is located, there's also other postgraduates in interaction design and product and medical device design. And if you undertake the professional diploma or the master's in service design, you would be interacting with people from those um, various courses as well. So it's nice, again, to have that postgraduate community and learn from other design disciplines, because um, as I'm sure we know, when you're out working, you're always interfacing with people uh, with different backgrounds and different disciplines. So service design, we have the professional diploma, which is 20 credits, and then we also have the MA, which is 90 credits. I'll explain a bit more about the differences between them uh, shortly. The product design department is located within the School of Design. We also have communication design department and design for body and environment departments as well. So that's kind of the, the bigger um, landscape that you're, you're part of when you study with NCAD. Um, as I mentioned at the start of the call, no design background is needed to study service design. What we're looking for and what's more important in terms of what makes a good service designer is um, the mindset that you have, that you have a curious mindset, that you like people and that you like um, digging into something to really understand all the complexities of um, how a service is delivered, why it's delivered that way and how all the parts of a service um, work with each other. So it's more that mindset and that kind of love of complexity and love of understanding people that we're looking for rather than having any specific design skills. Um, the courses in service design have been running since 2019. And over that, those few years, we've had people from banking, customer service, animation, theatre, um, technology, procurement, urban planning, photography, uh, from across the public sector and from across lots of different types of healthcare as well. So um, you will likely be in a class with designers and non-designers and everybody learns from each other and it's, it's a really nice environment and um, our graduates go on to work in a wide variety of roles and um, some go on to work as straight up service designers and um, others go on to look work in design or ux research and um, there's also cx or customer experience uh, roles experienced designers design strategists where they might start getting into policy development analysts workshop facilitation, et cetera. So there's kind of a wide variety of roles that you can move into um, after studying service design. And often um, they all involve the skills of a service designer, but the, the job title might just be slightly different. Um, so again, our graduates, I suppose, have gone on to work in these roles within public and private sector, within large multinationals and within indigenous companies as well. Um, so some of our graduates have gone on to work in the Matter Hospital, uh, Deloitte, Accenture, IBM, Context Studio, which is a, um, a local um, service design studio in, in Dublin 8, Maynooth University, iView, which is um, a kind of a medical startup. So again, people find themselves going into a lot, a lot of different, have the option to go into a lot of different contexts for work um, within the service design landscape. And 
it's great to see since the course has started that this is just the amount of roles that are advertised across public and um, private sector in Ireland for service design has just like um it's been exponential the growth of the sector in the, in the last um in the last number of years since we started the course um for anybody that doesn't know or anybody that's curious a nice definition of service design is that you're improving the experience not only of the user but also of the employee and by in order to do that, you need to understand and be able to optimize the organization's operations in order to better support those user journeys. So it's not all about human-centered design. It's also about systems thinking. It's also about understanding operations and um, understanding how an organization delivers value, et cetera, et cetera. So there's lots of different things that come together that you need to um, be able to investigate and understand in order to um, um, sort of deliver um, service solutions and another part of that is that as a service designer you're not only generating concepts but you're also making them tangible so that they can be tested and delivered and um, there's no use in, in just uh, having a lovely concept sketch or a lovely storyboard but how does that actually get prototyped? How do you actually test that out to make sure that it does what you want it to do and that you can measure impact? And that's something that, that we cover in the course. Um, so uh, I lecture um, on both the courses. My own background is in industrial design. I worked in Lecky in Belfast for many years in industrial design as an industrial designer. And then I moved into design ethnography and moved into lecturing and moved into service design then. So as well, in addition to uh, my practice as a lecturer, I also uh, provide senior um, design input on some of the HSC Spark projects as well. So it's really nice to have that uh, mix of the academic, but also um, practically working with designers who are delivering services um, in, in, in reality. So aside from myself, um, there's Brian Goff, who comes from more a graphic design UX background, um, who also lectures on the course as well. And then we have guest lecturers coming in from lots of different types of backgrounds and different types of industries. So this is just a small sample of the different people um, that we have coming in. You should uh, take a screenshot of that and try and follow them in LinkedIn because they're all they all post things that are kind of worth worth knowing about service design. So we have Drew from the Scottish government. He's a user research lead in the Scottish government. We've got Sinem um, from Pfizer. You know, she's in kind of like uh, looking at um, drug manufacturing. Uh, we've got Anne from Spark. She comes from a business background. She's also previously worked in Snook. Philippe teaches systems thinking. He works in Optum. John Lynch has established Context Studio and he comes in and lectures on a wide variety of things. And then we have Hazel White from Open Change and she lectures. Um, she's also a service designer, but she specifically lectures on things like sketching and visual note taking. So um, a lot of contact with the global service design community there as well. And um, the culture of the course. So as I mentioned before, it's a blended model. About 25 percent in person, 75 percent online. Um, we believe that this affords the students the opportunity to um, access the course from um, areas of the country that you know that you might necessarily be a stone's throw from Dublin that you're able to access the course online um, and then at various points it's usually around once a month that you come to Dublin you have the opportunity to be in a room with your classmates to do things in a physical environment and we think that balance is, is really important and um, so that blended model has worked really well for us and um, to date since we started and um, so ultimately we're human centered always looking at trying to discover and understand the human experience and um, at the heart of service organizations and we'll teach you ways that you can you can engage with that and um, we're about the impact of service design how to measure that how to show value how to bring service design Say you're already working in an area, you're already pretty much deliver, designing and delivering services, but how can you um, bring the skills that you learn in NCAD back to your um, workplace? How can you start integrating and showing impact and showing value uh, in your current context of work or if you go to work somewhere new? Um, it's also learning by doing as well. So um, 
a lot of the projects um they, there's a there's a saying that design is done forwards and learned backwards so a lot of the projects you might um you'll get a framework and you'll have a project brief and you'll work through that and then there'll be a reflection point thinking okay how do those methods work how did the team work uh, how do we test our solution etc cetera, etc cetera. so a lot of uh, the work that we do is is action based as well trying things out if it doesn't work tweak it try it again so not looking for the perfect solution straight off but working through various solutions so that idea of action is really important to us i think this is um summed up very well in the one particular um week that both the ma and the professional diploma students undertake with the professional diploma it's in trimester one within the ma it's within the second year but um and Louise can speak to this when he's on the call, but basically it's a one week sprint in the Matter Hospital. The service design cohort are paired in teams with uh, medical device designers and interaction designers. And you have one week um, to tackle a brief that has been um, has been put forward by members of the, the Matter Hospital staff. And you work through that brief, you work through discovery, definition, and then um, you work through um, developing and testing various ideas. And then by the end of the week, you're, you're pitching, uh, pitching the idea. And some of the ideas go on to um, get extra funding um, to be implemented within the hospital. So I'm just going to play a short, very short video here that gives you a bit of a sense of that. And I feel that it kind of sums up a lot of the principles of the course in, in, in three minutes and gives you a sense of the type of thing that you're going to be doing. Uh, when you're studying, so hopefully this works for me. It has been has been emotional at some at some parts. It's been intense, but at the same time, you know, to try and make someone's life that little bit better is all worth it. Hello, my name is Una Cunningham, um, and I'm head of Matter Transformation. Matter Transformation has been in place since 2013, and um, I suppose its basic function is to improve patient care. All our work um, involves a person-centred approach, getting the ideas from patients and staff about how to improve services, and we use a range of methodologies, including lean and laterally or design thinking. Design Week started back in 2016. At the time it was sort of just a little experiment that I started up with Professor Ronan Cahill, the Professor of Surgery here at the hospital. And it was really just out of curiosity and maybe just to see what might happen. And when we connected a bunch of designers at the time, it was medical device design, master students specifically, to connect them with hospital staff. Matter and CID Design Week is a one week kind of design sprint every autumn where we bring the students from the master's programs in NCID, so medical device design interaction design go over and they spend a week working on a range of different healthcare challenges from across the hospital. If you think of it in terms of a service, the, the service that the hospital is providing to a patient and we work on the touch points within that service. So those, those touch points could be websites, they could be apps, they could be the physical spaces that we move through or they could be forms or, or other uh, I suppose interactions and um, some of those are, are patient focused, sometimes it's clinician focused as well. We realised once we got down there all the medical staff have been great, we were chatting with everyone up from consultants down to like junior nurses and junior doctors and everybody in between within the emergency department and everyone was amazing. They were so helpful and once they heard what we were there for and what we were there to do and that we were there to help, they immediately opened up their arms and welcomed us in. My motto is everyone can always teach you something. So it was a constant like iteration of like doing a bit of design, showing it to the nurses, getting their feedback, doing more design and it going round and round and round. It's the whole world of service design is definitely evolving and particularly within within health and I think that it's really only through so say projects like like stroke link or like the, the like see and treat models or even the ID badges that people then start to see the kind of outputs and start to see oh god like this it actually has real and very obvious impact for patients. Well, we're lucky enough to have support to progress the ideas. Um, and I suppose the, the projects we've been working on, there's one physical product which is around a crash cart for, for cardiac and one which is based around the nursing assessment form. Now, they're two really nice projects which small amounts of funding can be progressed 
the next stage. We don't expect all of these to be implemented. The idea of Design Week is to sort of stimulate fresh thinking, give people an understanding of what design is about. Our finished form, it went from the original 19 pages down to six, and of that six, it's, it's basically four. And that obviously cuts down the nurses' time like a lot, so they can spend more time with their patients. The one that looked at the admission form for the nurses, when we quantify the benefit of that, it's about 375,000 pages that don't have to be filled in any longer by the nursing community and we've all seen it in the news. Nurses are hugely pressured by the volume of work and it's difficult to get nurses. So anything that we can do to reduce the paper workload so they can spend more time with the patient is always welcomed. This whole week really I've kind of had a smile on my face even though it has been kind of in some ways emotional and intense and um, you know it kind of really gives you a meaning of what being a designer can be. Okay, so that's just a kind of a snapshot of, of the matter week and I suppose we're not oops, we're not all about uh, healthcare in the course either we partner with a lot of other um, sorts of, of companies uh, consultancies that uh, our students have worked with consultancies such as um, Fjord, Accenture and um, also partnered with public sector bodies and um, the Department of Justice we've also had um, students working with um, startups such as Opening and Cognition World. We've had other students work with, uh, one of the students worked with this company, it's an industry 4.0 autonomous vehicle company um, and uh, he was or he's redesigning the experience of test driving uh, when you're in an autonomous vehicle. So we've got a wide um, spectrum of different types of projects that the students work on but um, the matter is a particularly good one in terms of um, crystallizing how how you know good service design can make an impact can make a difference and we're we're really really lucky to have the support of um the transformation team in the matter hospital the matter staff and also hse spark to, to make that week happen so um and their expertise and their insight then combined with um the the designers uh, tends to bring really really good stuff together and um, we're also um i can say this now because the course has been running for a few years but we're, we're a globally recognized course um, our projects win awards as examples of education such as idi awards and um, that's a national design award and then our students have gone on to um for the last three years in a row have won the student prize in the global service design network um, awards so we have marie there uh, then we have chu yi and then we have um, Linda and Ashling, who collaborated with an interaction designer as well. So we're kind of like the Dublin GAA team of uh, the Service Design Network Awards uh, in terms of uh, great success. And that's just really nice to, it's not all about the awards, but it's just really nice to see that our students are producing work that is globally leading and globally recognized. And each of those projects that are now on the Service Design Network website and they're recognized as excellent case studies of service design. So we're really proud of our students and, and the work that they do. And it's just excellent, really, things that they get up to. We're also research active um, within the product design department. So we have NCAD Design Labs, where you can um, I'll get um, the, the link in the chat there, and you can have a look at the different types of projects that students and staff do. And um, we have a health lab. We also have a circular lab and a learning lab. So there's a lot of different types of um, activity happening within the product design department and some of the students once they graduate end up um, continuing to work within the department on these types of research projects as well such as SimuSkin or iView etc so um, it's nice to have that side um, to the um, to the academic experience as well. Uh, one thing that we're also quite active in is the local ser the, the National Service Design Ireland organization so I'm on the um, national steering group of that and we regularly host events in NCAD with um, national and international speakers coming in uh, with, and we have one coming up in May the details haven't been released yet but I'll uh, hopefully make sure that you keep an eye on, on the social media and things like that and you can and um, there's we have a speaker coming over from the UK and so it's nice to again be part of that community have events happening on your doorstep and be able to attend them with your peers as well and um, so that's all for, for the culture. And um, if we're looking at content, as I mentioned, so there is a studio space within NCAD where you can um, sort of do your in-person work. And um, besides that, we use Zoom and we use Canvas um, as ways to, to interact when we're not in person. Um, 
So getting into I suppose, the particulars about the course courses. So we have a professional diploma. Um, it's a nine month course. It's a level nine NFQ. It's continuous assessment. There's no exams. Uh, it starts September 2024 and it runs until uh, May 2025. Um, it's a 20 credit course and it's spread over two trimesters. So in trimester one, you undertake design principles, which is kind of like the fundamentals of service design. And then you undertake design collaboration one, which is the matter sprint week. Um, and it looks a bit like this trimester one. So as you can see here, um, our design collaboration is all in person. It's a one week sprint. Um, so this is a draft timetable from last year. So it may change. I think it's the sprint is gonna be a little later in the term next year. But that's a one week engagement where you, you're in Dublin in person for one week based in the Matter Hospital. Um, that's your five credit module. Then you have design principles, which is six three hour sessions uh, on Wednesday mornings between half past nine and half past 12. That's the timetabling for this year. Again, keep an eye on the website. I don't think it's going to change, but it could change. Um, and as you can see there, there's uh, it's 50 percent. So we have three sessions in person and then three sessions online as well. And that finishes up before Christmas. Um, trimester two, the spring trimester, uh, five credits is design practices. That's currently designing with data. And then you have your design capstone project, which is also five credits. And that's a self, um, a self directed project where you create your own project brief that could be linked to your work or could be linked to an area of interest. And then you undertake that brief um, in the second half of uh, spring trimester two. Um, again, there, there's slightly more contact time in the second trimester because you don't have the sprint week. Uh, again, it's six three hour sessions per five credit module and it's a 50-50 split between uh, in person and online. Um, so the MA is slightly different, the course breakdown. So you start in September, 2024, it runs for 24 months. It's a level nine NFQ as well. And it's also continuous assessment. Um, so if we look at the course breakdown in year one, slightly different to professional diploma, but there's some common modules. So autumn trimester, design principles, your fundamentals of service design, and then we have service design fundamentals, which is uh, usually a, measure, a project around measuring impact. In spring trimester two, we have design practices, um, it's a deep dive into the methodology and tools around service design. So you're looking at UX fundamentals, um, systems thinking, business origami, all these sorts of things. And then we service design studio, um, which we're looking at the minute the students are working on accessible uh, design for public transport. And it's very much a human centered design project. And we bring in subject matter experts, disability activists as part of the teaching team on that. For the summer trimester, the students again have um, a five credit. So that's your CFA electives, Creative Futures Academy. So the students get a chance to choose um, from a range of five credit modules um, from this Creative Futures Academy and uh, really, really interesting mixture there. We've got things from uh, uh, Creative Boardroom, which is looking at how um, directors, company directors can impact on climate change. And um, we've got digital making, digital fabrication. Then we have another one that's art and ecology. So you can really dip into various other disciplines in that and then also um, on the summer trimester, students are starting to think about their major project, which is their um, major body of work that they will do um, in trimester six. So trimester four, the autumn trimester of year two, you do your design collaborations there. You do your matter sprint in second year, uh, strategic design for change. We have the design capstone, which is a smaller project. Again, a self-directed brief. We have a collaborative design studio brief. And then uh, for the summer trimester there, students are taking on their major projects. So there's no, I suppose, thesis involved in this master's as a traditional written thesis. What's involved is there is a written piece, but it's, it's documentation of your studio work. So you will choose to take on, for example, one of our students work, looked at immigration processes in the Department of Justice, and he you know, worked closely within the Department of Justice on that project. And then he produced, um, it's uh, we call it a design rationale. It's like a documentation and a reflective document of the work that was done during the service design practice. So it's all very linked to design practice rather than doing your practice and then having kind of a separate written thesis. So um, you can see there, 
there's a mixture between five credit and 10 credit modules. The MA is slightly different again in terms of timetabling. So the MA is a full day. Um, this year it's a Thursday. I expect it to remain a Thursday, but keep an eye on the website. Um, you see that five credit modules are four one day sessions, and then the 10 credit modules are eight one day sessions. And again, there's that 50, so there's that, that split um, between in person and online. Again, five credit and 10 credit modules. And again, you've got that sort of split between in person and online and you've got your your sessions running across the trimester as well and um, so how to apply for the courses the professional diploma application details so um professional diploma is 2200 euros you're looking at a 500 word statement of interest and um, a recent cv um, transcripts of previous programs undertaken and two references so that's the application um requirement for the professional diploma if you're looking at applying for the MA, there's a slightly bigger commitment. Um, the fees are 4,500 per annum. The priority deadline for this actually is the 29th of March. So it's coming up. So actually, actually a month from today. Um, again, there's a 500 word statement of interest, a recent CV transcript of previous qualifications or programs, um, two references, and also a portfolio or evidence of previous work. So we're not, I know that NCAD portfolio can be kind of famous in terms of like volume of artistic work. It's not like that at all for this course. What we're looking at is um, how can you show us perhaps a case study of how you've um, changed something or um, designed something in your workplace or um, as part of a hobby, etc. Something where you've noticed a problem or an opportunity and you've tried to make a change to a system. Um, again, this could be a one or two page PDF, just telling us the story, maybe with some images of how you um, how you addressed um, an issue or a challenge and how you kind of solved that. Uh, we've had people in the past, um, one of our previous students had been a bungee jumping instructor in New Zealand, and she noticed how kind of nervous people were um, when they were going to bungee jump and the amount of times people kind of turned back. And then she told about the effect that this was having on the staff and also the staff end of things. So she looked at the system and she made a few changes to the process of getting ready for a bungee jump and this improved things. Uh, we've had people as well that have been uh, working in a coffee shop and have noticed that people can never find the lids or, you know, for example, and they've kind of made some changes to some of the touch points within the coffee shop that make people have a better experience within the coffee shop. So all of these types of things um, can be really interesting. We're also obviously interested in any um, design work you might do. Do you make videos? Do you, I, I do, are you a photographer? Um, you know, are you a storyteller? So all of these different things, um, any sort of creative things that you do, we're really excited to see those things as well. Um, so that's everything from me.